Hello Brilliant 3D Jewelry channel, welcome to this new tutorial, my name is Damien. Today we're going to model a necklace stand for our future necklaces designs. Let's get started. Add mesh circle, 32 vertices will be fine. Average circumference for a woman neck is 34 centimeters. So it means that the diameter, which is what we're getting here, is going to be 34 divided by pi 3.141592 enter call this necklace stand save and be happy and this is it for today's tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot thanks for supporting my channel take care and see you soon great if you're still here it means you have some sense of humor let's go to edit mode close it with f now let's extrude on the z-axis, scale slightly, go to the front view, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale more, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale slightly, extrude, scale very slightly, Extrude, scale, even less, here, extrude, extrude, and now we're going to start scaling down, scale down, extrude, scale down, extrude, scale down, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, Extrude one last time and scale for a bevel. Save and be happy. Now check the face orientation right here. It's all red. Select everything with A, Alt N, and flip. Now let's go to modifiers, add modifier, generate subdivision surface, level 3. Now top view, select this vertex here at the back and with control select this vertex down here now side view turn on proportional editing grab on the y-axis adapt the size of the area of effect and shape like this that's going to be the back go to face mode select the top face make an inset one time make an inset a second time here go to the bottom face and do the same process one time two times go back to vertex mode now select this vertex grab on the y-axis make the area of effect smaller and readapt the shape of your neck here and repeat a bit lower grab on the y-axis here save and be happy now come to the front and select this foremost vertex go to side view grab make the area of effect bigger and lower it here now select this vertex go to side view grab and come back here now select this middle vertex grab on the z-axis make the area of effect smaller and adjust here now go to the side view turn on the x-rays deselect everything with alt a b box selection select here scale on the x-axis like this go to the back select this lower vertex grab on the y-axis and readjust to the back here take this front vertex Grab on the y-axis and readapt here. Take this middle vertex, go to the side view, turn on the x-rays, grab, lower the area of effect and readjust here. Now select this vertex, grab on the z-axis and lower it pretty strongly. Now select this middle vertex, go to the side view and readapt here. Now select this middle vertex, grab on the z-axis, lower the area of effect, 
bring it here, scale on the x-axis, adjust the area of effect as needed, and we create a sharper shape here. Now front view, select this vertex on the left and with shift select the same vertex here on the right. Scale on the x-axis, lower the area of effect and make it sharper here. Now turn on the x-rays, deselect everything with Alt-A, C for the circle selection, select these three vertices here on the left and the same three vertices there on the right. Escape the circle selection, go back to solid view, scale on the x-axis and make a more stylized shape like this. Save and be happy. Now when we look at our shape, we can see that our curve is slightly bent here. I'm going to select this vertex on the right, go to the front view and with shift select the same vertex on the left. Now I'm going to scale on the x-axis as needed. Now let's select this middle vertex, go to side view, grab on the y-axis and readapt here. Turn on the x-rays, let's select these levels down here, grab on the z-axis, adapt here, select the front vertex, go back to side view, readapt here. Now let's select this row, Turn off the proportional editing, scale on the z-axis to zero. Select the next row. Now we're going to scale on the z-axis to make it less steep, like this. Now select the bottom levels, scale on the z-axis to zero, and readapt your finishing bevel. Do a Shift S cursor to selected. In the view tab, check that the 3D cursor is centered on the X and Y axis to zero and set the origin to the 3D cursor. Go back to the item tab and center your necklace stand to zero. Don't forget to set a smooth shade. Save and be happy. Now that you like the shape of your necklace stand, we're going to create a velvet material. Let's go to the shading workspace. First, in the world properties, we are going to create an environment texture. Opening the Brown Photo Studio 2 AXR, you can download it from Polyhaven. Now we're going to turn on the render preview here. For our necklace stand, we're going to create a new material and we're going to call it Velvet. Metallic is going to be 0.7. For the color, we're going to add an RGB node and plug it to base color. Then we're going to add an ambient occlusion node here in the middle. Set the sample to the level you like and the distance to 50. For the color, I'm going to create a beige velvet. Now we're going to go to the world settings. We are going to add an RGB node. Now we're going to add a mix shader node. We're going to bring the color to this empty node. And now we need to add a light path node to bring the camera ray to the factor. For the color of the background, I'm going to use a dark blue. Now we can go back to the object shading. I'm going to add a Gabor texture and I'm going to plug the value to the normal. Now I'm going to add a vector bump here after the Gabor. I'm going to change this normal node to the height. We are going to set the type of the Gabor to the 3D type. Now let me tweak the scale to 15 and the frequency to 75. We can now tweak the strength of the bump to something of our liking. Point 25. It's also time to add a bevel node after the bump. Set the samples to your liking and also the radius. Now go to edit mode. Select this face and extend the selection with Ctrl plus. Go to mesh data, add a vertex group. Assign this selection to the group. Now go to the bottom of your necklace stand. Turn on the X-rays, deselect everything, and select the bottom faces. Also assign them to the same vertex group. Now select the vertex group and invert it with a Ctrl-I. 
create a new vertex group and assign this selection to the new group. You can call this group Velvet. Exit edit mode. Don't forget to save and to be happy. Now to add a little bit more of effect to our velvet, we're going to add a texture or a noise texture. Plug the distance to the height of the bump to replace the gabble texture for a moment. Now it's time to tweak the scale of the Voronoi texture to 1200. Now we're going to combine the Voronoi and the Gabor textures. Add Converter Math node. Add an Add node here. Plug the Gabor texture value to the value in the Add node. If you zoom in, you can now see the new details of our velvet texture. Now, let's proceed to add a coat. The weight will be 0.4, the roughness would be 0.3. Now, in the same fashion, let's proceed and add a sheen effect. The weight will be 0.3, the roughness will be 0.2. Here, you can choose to adapt the color to something of your liking. I will be using a color close to my original velvet, but warmer. It's time to go back to Layout. Select an angle you like and press Alt, Ctrl and 0 to set the camera to the view. Go to the Output tab and set a vertical resolution. Select the camera, move it accordingly. Adapt the focal length to have your necklace stand in the frame. Add a mesh plane to create a floor. Tweak its size and don't forget to readapt the clip end of your camera. Put the floor in the frame. Let's return to the shading workspace to create the floor and finish our render. For the floor, create a new material and call it floor. Go to the camera view. Set metallic to 1. For the color, go to the world shading. Select the RGB. Copy it with Ctrl C and go back to the object shading. Pass the RGB and plug it to the base color. We're going to make the floor of the same color, but lighter, like this. Don't forget to add an ambient occlusion node here in the middle and tweak the distance to 250. Now we want to add a texture, Gabor texture, to the floor. The value goes to the normal node. Add a vector bump just after the texture. Plug the value to height. Now tweak the scale of the Gabor texture and the strength of the bump. Reduce the roughness to 0.4 on the floor. Now we're going to add a color ramp to the alpha of the floor. For this to work, we need to add a texture coordinate generated to the factor. We're also missing a gradient texture before the color ramp and a vector mapping node before the gradient. This allows us to tweak the position of the gradient according to our needs. Don't forget to work on the color ramp. Sometimes the B-Splint type gives a smoother result. It's important to add a second black color to have the ending really at 0%. We still need to add a light point light from the backside. Tweak the power, tweak the size, and tweak the strength. You can also tweak the color of the light to have a more vibrant result. Now in the render tab, set the samples at 618 the denoiser to the open image denoiser, passes to albedo and normal, pre-filter to accurate, quality to high, use the GPU, set the render at 200% to make a 4K render. Now it's time to press F12 to complete the render.